Speaking of Boiling Springs Hotel, don't we all love a good horror story? And doesn't learning that a horror story is based on reality make it just a little creepier, a little more real? Sometimes reality can be just as spooky. Here's a story that Ruth Ann Music gives us in the Telltale Lilac Bush. She tells this story called The Legend of Boiling Springs. Now, Ruth Ann Music was a scholar of folklore, history, and stories. And she, she taught at Fairmont State College back in the day. And what she did for the Telltale Lilac Bush is she would gather up the stories from all of her peoples and collectively put them into the Telltale Lilac Bush. But now I've been doing some research on this story and it's not quite the way she recorded it in this book. So I've looked up the records and everything behind it. And I'll tell you the story that music gives in her book, along with uh, some random photos to recreate her version of the story. And then I'll come back and give you the true story with the actual photos. She titled hers, The Legend of Boiling Springs. About 20 miles east of Parkersburg on US 50, there is an old dirt road. About 14 miles out that road is a huge, very dilapidated old hotel. Many years ago, this hotel was one of the most popular resorts in West Virginia. It was called Boiling Springs and was famous for its healthful mineral and sulfur springs. People from all over the eastern part of the United States came here. Suddenly, though, the resort began to lose popularity, but there is a story that might explain it. Once there was a man staying at a hotel by the name of Grayson. He fell in love with a very lovely lady who was also staying there. Her name was Pearson. Another man named Miller who was staying there also fell in love with Miss Pearson. One day, Mr. Grayson saw Mr. Miller with Miss Pearson, and it made him very jealous. A few days later, the two got into a heated argument over the woman. The argument soon developed into a fight, and the men fought so fiercely that they did not notice how close they were to the edge of the cliff, which was in front of the hotel. They both fell over the cliff, and both died about an hour later. Miss Pearson, who actually loved Mr. Miller, was so grieved over the death of her lover that she killed herself by leaping off the cliff. Soon the resort began to lose business. People began to hear weird noises in the hotel at night. Within a year, no one would go near the place because it was believed to be haunted. That's the ending of her story. And I was intrigued by this story because it involved actual names and locations. But I was able to use those uh, details to actually discover the real story behind it. Now, I could not find any references to a Boiling Springs, West Virginia, that fit the location described in the story. At first, I found a burning springs further south and thought it might have been the place, but I could not find any references to a burning springs hotel. And I thought surely a hotel as grand as the one described in the story would have had a photo or two or at least some mention of it somewhere online. But I kept searching until I came across this place. So after reading the history that I found, it's clear that they're one and the same with only a few differences in detail. First of all, Borland is the real name, not Boiling, Borland, West Virginia. 
I'm sure this is the place. Now, the former Borland Springs Hotel was built by John Wilbur Grimm in 1908. Grimm, who was born in Pennsylvania on September 22nd, 1866, built the hotel atop a 240-acre property straddling Wood and Pleasant County along Bull Creek. When opened, the inn boasted 65 rooms, a dining room seating 90, and ample recreational opportunities such as swimming, canoeing, and horseback riding. However, it was for the healing benefits of the mineral springs that led to its popularity, and at weekly rates of $12 to $20, which included meals, it was affordable to the majority of the population. And back then, people thought the springs could cure anything and would travel many miles to, as I said, to take the cure. Well, the business did really well until August 16th of 1918. That year, Grimm's oldest son, Frank Chandis Grimm, shot and killed 20-year-old John Maidens in the spring house. Allegedly, the murder involved a love triangle involving a Miss Pearson. It is said that in the spring house, which often hosted dances, picnics, and other social events, Frank Chandis Grimm shot Mr. Maiden, and the blood-stained remains embedded in the wood floor for years afterwards. Shortly after the murder, guests began to report strange noises and other odd happenings around the hotel. Business also took a turn for the worse, and finally Grimm sold the hotel in 1932 to Carr Thomas Levitt, C.T. Levitt, a local mortician and funeral home owner from Parkersburg, West Virginia. Now Levitt did extensive restorations on a declining hotel, including redoing the blood-stained spring house. He reopened the resort in 1934 and operated it until 1938. Hard times required the hotel to temporarily shut down, reopening in 1940 to 1941, when it was finally shut down permanently. Permanently, that is, as a hotel. By the early 1950s, the former hotel served as a massive chicken coop for 12,500 chickens. Can't make this stuff up, folks. Before burning to the ground in 1967. And by 1965, two years before it burned to the ground, the building had been abandoned for quite some time and was obviously vandalized. Inside, pipes were visible, presumably steam or hot water, that ran through the building and was supposedly used to heat the building when it was used to raise chickens. Now, when the house burned in 1967, the spring house was already burned down. And at that time, all there really was of the spring house was a pipe coming up from the floor and a slow but steady flow of water issuing from the old spring. Now I've started looking into documentations. I've managed to trace all the participating people in this story, with the exception of Miss Pearson. With her, I was posed a great challenge. Now in a story from Ruth Ann Music, she jumps off the cliff. In the actual story, there is no such ending mentioned. Neither story gives her a first name. It doesn't say if she was an employee, such as John appeared to be, or she could have been a guest from anywhere. She could have uh, married anyone afterwards, changing her name. And it doesn't say when exactly she was born. I just have no idea where to look with her. Now, what we do know for sure from documents I could find 
John Maidens, who was really called Johnny Maidens, died on August 16, 1918. From different sources have stated that the blood stain on the floor of the spring house remained for years. It was true that John Wilbur Grimm in 1908 did build the Borland Hotel. Frank Chandis Grimm was his son and was a year younger than Johnny Maidens. Perfect age to have a love rivalry going on there. Johnny was 20. Frank at the time was 19. The hotel declined and closed after all these events. It was doing good up to that point. And to further support that love triangle thing, it was apparent that Frank was on the market for a wife. Or perhaps he did it just to squelch rumors of the love triangle going on. But he never married Miss Pearson. She just kind of fades from view whether she jumped off the cliff, as in uh, Ruth Ann Music's version, or if she went on to get married, it's not known. But rather, Frank married Desi Buell Ingram. They were married on October 17th of 1918 in Pleasance County, West Virginia, just a short two months after the murder. It seems that they might have been a bit rushed to uh, get married, maybe to uh, put this story behind him. But it does not end there because it may have been at that marriage ceremony where the mother of the groom, Wilbur Grimm's wife, Mary Hester, caught the flu during the Spanish flu outbreak and died on October 29th, 1918, 12 days after Frank and Desi's marriage. Now, Frank Chandis Grimm would die in Tampa, Florida in 1964 and is now buried in the Sarasota Memorial Cemetery in Sarasota, Florida. And I could find no clues as to whether or not Frank ever served time for the shooting or if he was even arrested over it or if they just considered it perhaps a case of self-defense but this is that kind of juicy little uh, story that goes back to the victorian era 1918 that would probably still be considered victorian and it's got that hidden mannerism about it like perhaps the Grimm family had the money to uh, possibly cover up the situation, make the problem go away, so to speak. But the problem did not go away. Today, the property sits outside of the Mount Wood Park campgrounds and is still rumored to be haunted. You see, they believe that John, a.k.a. Johnny Maidens, might have put a curse on the once prosperous hotel and is now doomed to walk the property for an eternity, going possibly unavenged. You have to wonder, is he now accompanied by the spirit of former owner J.W. Grimm, who died in 1955? Could his spirit be coming back to show his displeasure at the fate of his former resort? This haunting has been going on now for 105 years, and it's still going on. And now you know the rest of the story. Mm -hmm.